Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. Today we're taking a look at all of the planes. What's the difference between a little squirrel tail and a Cooper's plane and everything in between? Let's dive in. The best place to start is at the beginning. And when it comes to hand planes, that's the bench plane. This, if you see a hand plane, it's shaped like this. This is a bench plane because it lives on the bench. They come in a number of sizes, and when you go by the Stanley numbering system, you have the number one up to the number eight. And in those ranges, generally the bigger the number, the bigger the plane. I don't have a number one, maybe someday I'll get that, but those are collectible and not really usable. I do have a number two. It's a cute little thing about the size of a man's palm. It is a, a good little smoother, though it's very, very small. Usually this would be the one I would give to the kids because it's about a kid's size handle. Then they go all the way up to the number eight, which is generally considered to be the jointer plane. And, and anything from around a five and a half and on up is considered a jointer plane or a joiner plane, if you want to say that. Now, if you want to name the bench planes, you're probably going to start some arguments as with naming anything in the shop. For most people, the most common one is the number four. This would be considered the smoother. The three, the two, the four and a half, they would all be considered smoothers. They're smaller planes. They're not intended to flatten a large board, though they can do that. They're very well focused for smoothing out and being the last thing to touch the wood. Then you get up to the jack plane. And generally, the jack plane is just the number five. The five and a half, the five and a quarter, those don't generally fall into jack plane. Though you will hear some people throw that into other numbers. It's called that because it's kind of the jack of all trades. You can joint with this, you can smooth with this, you can do a lot with it. And honestly, if you need one, most of the time I'm gonna tell people number five, particularly if you're planning on doing furniture. But if most of what you're doing are smaller things under two foot in length, then the number four is probably gonna be the one go-to plane. If you step up from the number five, you're gonna run into something that some people refer to as a four plane. And I'm gonna be talking about this a little bit more when I get to the scrub plane. So let's set that on the shelf for the moment. Everything from the five and a half on up is usually considered a jointer. Though the number eight is the big one. This is the Mondo and honestly, because it's so big and so heavy, I don't use it that much. If I'm gonna to need to do large boards, I'm gonna pull out my seven, not the eight. If you wanna see a video on all of the Stanley numbers, I'll leave a link to that down below. But let's move away from bench planes and start looking at some of these other weird things. The next one on the list is the little block plane. Now they come in many different shapes and sizes and colors and styles and doohickeys and bells and whistles. But a block plane is a block plane. To the all hand tool user, you don't use a block plane that much. It is fantastic for chamfering. You can grab it and go right along it. It's mostly a one-handed tool. And it is great for doing those little details and small end grain pieces. It works well for that. If the end grain is much larger than about that though, you're probably gonna wanna go up to something else. The reason that there are so many different types of them is there are so many different bells and whistles and some people like some of them and some people don't like them and some people want one thing and they don't want the other. Some people want a lateral adjuster. Some people want a closable mouth. Some people want fine tuning. Some people want a rabbit on the side. There are lots of things that can go into it and everyone has different tastes. So when it comes down to picking the right block plane, that comes down to you and what you want in it. The other weirdo on the list is the low angle jack plane. Stanley introduced the number 62 as an end grain chopping board plane. The one thing with a low angle bevel up plane is it is fantastic on end grain work. And for a long time, that's basically all it was. Stanley didn't make that many 62s. They weren't really used by people who did a lot of hand tool woodworking. But then the power tool people in the late 90s and early aughts started getting back into hand tools and these are easier to push. They're easier to learn. They're easier to work with and they can do 99% of what a regular number five would do. But, that meant that a lot of people wanted these for users and they became very expensive and very collectible. Now Veritas and many others are actually coming out with other sizes where you can get a number four size with a low angle bevel up plane. In the end, if you wanna see a conversation between bevel up and bevel down, uh, I'll leave a link to that video down below as well. A little bit ago, I mentioned rabbiting. And rabbiting is any time that the iron comes all the way to the side of the iron, you see this little opening here. This comes in many different planes, such as a rabbiting block plane, the number 10 or 10 and a half with a rabbiting bench plane. This is sometimes referred to as a rabbit plane because that's all it does is it's rabbited. It's a rabbiting plane. This particular one has a skewed iron. It's at an angle, so it is a skewed rabbiting plane. 
Since I have this in hand, let's talk about molding planes. Molding planes come in all different shapes and styles. You can get them hollows, you can get them rounds, you can get them coves, you can get them OGs, you can get them beading, you can do whatever you want. If you have a molding you want to make, there's a molding plane with a particular profile for it. Even tongue and groove planes. This one will create a groove and you can get a matching plane that also creates the tongue. There are lots of them to choose from. There are quite literally thousands of different shapes and styles and you can never collect them all. But every one of them just makes one particular shape. Enter the combination plane, known as the king of hand planes, the Stanley 55. The combination plane replaces a pile of molding planes and puts them all in one because you can set it up differently, you can move the soles around, you can put different irons into it. The 55 was said to be able to replace 55 planes, and in all honesty, it replaces many, many more than that because there were hundreds of different cutters made for the Stanley 55. But if that's a little bit too complicated, you can step down to the Stanley 45. It does most of the same things. It has a few less features, but it's far more affordable and easier to set up. And if the 45 is too much, you could go all the way down to the Stanley 50. This is basically just for grooves, beading, and this is basically just for grooves, rabbits, dados, and beading. But that's 95% of the things you're going to need a combination plane to do. Stepping back to wooden planes for a moment, one of the interesting ones is the moving philister plane. This is a rabbiting plane. It comes all the way out. It's a skewed rabbiting plane, but this has a fence and a depth stop. And if it has a fence and a depth stop and it's a rabbiting plane, then it's a moving philister plane. Stanley even came out with one of these in the metal version. This one is actually from Miller's Falls, and it's the Miller's Falls 85, but it is a rabbiting plane. It's got a fence, it has a depth stop, but my depth stop is still up on the shelf. It will do everything that will do, but in a metal body. When it comes to other weird planes, this is the compass plane. The compass plane is set up so that I can change the sole from being flat to having either a concave or convex sole. This will allow me to do rounds in either direction. I do have a full video on this as well, and they are a lot of fun to use. If you ever need to do a rounded surface, these are phenomenal with it. They're very, very quick at it. But how often do you really need to do that? I usually only use mine once every other year or so, and even then, most of the time, that's just for demonstration's sake. If I were doing a lot of arches in furniture, I probably would want one of these because it would be very, very valuable for that. But if you're not doing a lot of arches, then you don't really need a circular plane. But they are really, really cool and uh, really pretty. Next, we have the shoulder plane. And technically, it is a rabbiting plane because the iron comes all the outside. But anytime you have a low angle bevel up rabbiting plane, it's called a shoulder plane. It's designed to do the shoulder, which is a cross grain cut. So the low angle bevel up works great at doing the end grain on there. Whereas a rabbiting plane will come in and will do the face grain of the cheek. If you're a power tool person, this is one of the three that you probably want to have in your shop. A shoulder plane is fantastic for just doing that last little cleanup to fit things perfectly. It's a great little plane, but they're relatively expensive. The first one you're probably going to want is the block plane. Hand tool users don't use the block plane that much, but for power tool users, it's great to have in your apron so you can carry it around with you. You can always just do those little details and cleanups. The third one most power tool users want is a router plane. This is phenomenal because you can use it to clean up the surfaces on your tenons. You can register off of this face and make sure that this face is coplanar with the first one. It is phenomenal for getting into grooves and little details and cleaning up where an electric router leaves off and leaves a mess. This will come in and leave you with a buttery smooth clean surface. Next I have the scrub plane. This is the Stanley number 40. It is a cheap, simple, simple plane. It's an iron, a wedge. There is no chip breaker on this. There are no adjustments. If you need to move this in and out, you hit it with a hammer. It takes off very heavy shavings. The iron is really heavily cambered to take off a large chunk with every pass. It's such a cheap and simple plane that a lot of times if you have an old beater number four that you don't care too much about, it's really easy to turn it into a scrub plane. You open the mouth up a little bit, you put a camber on the iron, and Bob's your uncle, you've got a scrub plane. It's a little bit wider than a standard scrub plane, but it works really well for it. The other term you're going to hear a lot is four plane, and you may have realized I talked about the four plane a little earlier when I pulled out the five and a half. Usually the five and a half and the six follow in the category of four plane. It is really common for those to have a slightly cambered iron to do a lot of the same stuff that a scrub plane would do. It's wider, would take off more work, and it's longer, so it's a little bit better for flattening. Usually the four plane would be the first plane to touch the wood. It's the four plane because it comes before all of the other planes. 
Though uh, the four plane and the scrub plane, there's minor differences and you're going to hear a lot of people arguing about one or the other and referring to one or the other. So have fun in the comments. A couple other interesting planes of note. The squirrel tail. Anytime you have a little tail coming off the back, it's designed to fit into the palm of your hand so it all works a little bit better. You'll see these a lot on little planes, particular luthier planes. Anytime you put this on, it's called a squirrel tail. Stanley did make a few block planes with a squirrel tail that would actually come off the back and make this longer. Um, I don't generally like holding it because that puts the palm of your hand way out here and makes it a little harder to use. I like to put the palm of my hand right there. The shooting board plane is a specialty plane and the originals are incredibly expensive. This is the Stanley 51 and they are, they are very, very expensive. It takes the frog and all of the designs and functionality from a standard bench plane and then rotates it and just twists it on surface. So you end up getting a skewed cut, but without a skewed iron. This is still a flat iron. And this sole then rides in a slot on your shooting board to give you perfectly cleaned and trimmed ends. Skewing it actually puts it at a lower cutting angle, so the effective cutting angle of this is even lower than the low angle bevel up plane. Not something you should immediately go out and get, but if you're finding yourself doing a lot of shooting, this might be something you want to think about. Now there are lots and lots of other planes out there, and I'm not even scratching the surface. I, I didn't even talk about the Cooper's plane, and, and then I, there's Luthier's planes. There are specialty planes out there for every project and field you could possibly work in. And a lot of them get very specific and very technical, especially when you get into coopering and carriage making. There are some really wild planes. Now, do you need to go out and buy all of these? No. You buy a couple bench planes and you'll be set to go. Buy a small one, buy a big one, you can do 90% of the work you need to do. And eventually over time you're going to come to a project and be like, you know, it'd be really nice to have a rabbiting plane for this. Well, maybe go buy a rabbiting block plane. And eventually, over time, you're going to find that you, you, you really need that. And oh, I really need that. And eventually, you've got a problem on your hands. So I hope you like this. If you have a particular plane you'd like me to talk about or want something more, I probably have a dedicated video to every tool on this bench. Uh, but if there's something I don't have, then let me know and maybe I'll make a video off of that. If you have any particular questions, feel free to throw those in the comments down below. I do read through all of them and I answer as many of them as I can get to. So thank you. That actually helps out the channel. And as well as commenting, liking, sharing, subscribing, you could think about becoming a patron. All of these names over here, those are all patrons on Patreon. Between patrons and members who click the join button down below, you guys are the ones who sponsor this channel. We don't run sponsors and ads on here because I want to say what I want to say. And so because of that, you guys get to have me say what you want me to say. So if there's something you want me to talk about, let me know. I hope you like that. And I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. This is not a plain and simple video. It's rather plain and complex. It may be a simple wooden plane that's over 200 years old, but it's still cutting edge technology.